And uh, here's what uh, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to really do two different things, even though there are four points here. The first two is uh, ask you to indulge me for about three minutes in one of my personal soapbox passions about the importance of practical patient report measures, and especially for primary care, and especially in the electronic health record. And then I'm going to do what my assignment was supposed to be to do a case study, telling you uh, about. Uh, how we did this with some practical measures in a uh, example project and draw a couple lessons learned. So with that, why do we need practical measures? Uh, most of us uh, have some type of training. Those of you that are behavioral scientists have tons of training on how to create the perfect psychometric measure. And how do we, how do, we do that? Well, generally how we do that is we ask like two or three hundred items and we ask the same thing 12 different ways. And then we get great internal consistency and great factor structure and stuff. What happens when you try to do that in a real world setting? Okay, it's a deal breaker. Nobody's going to do that. Just one measure, let alone uh, others. But thinking about particularly the, the real world of primary care and how many things that, uh, that they have to do. Um, so I don't think I'm going to read all of these points, or I'll never make my, uh, my time, but I do want to point out that there is an important need in the area of DNI science, as well as many others, to, uh, to kind of have some harmonization, or what some people might call standardization. If we all use our own measure, I don't know how we're going to know Ross's study, how does that compare to mine? If he uses his own measure he made up and I use mine that, uh, that, that I made up. So, um, what, what we need to think a little differently. Um, as Borsica said, her quote, maybe not keep doing the same thing over and over again, but there's no real firm guide uh, line or book for what are the criteria. We know for a traditional measure kind of what these criteria are. Um, it's a little less clear for real world, practical, brief uh, measures. On uh, pages 31 and 32 are a couple of things that my colleagues and I have been involved with in terms of, and you can see a little bit of difference, hopefully some commonalities, but about criteria used in different projects, including the one I'm going to talk about there. But, but central uh, to this, uh, you could kind of nitpick which, what's required and what's additional. We, we broke them up that way because we figured if we ask about eight or ten things, people would say, you know, forget it. it would never, it's just too hard. No, nothing's ever going to work. So, so we kind of came up with these, but I, uh, well, I'll come back to that when I'm finished. But, but you might want to look in your book about, uh, about those. Okay, now the one that uh, I could go, the next two slides I could go on and on about forever. But um, we all talk about big data. Having recently come from NIH, I can tell you what most people in NIH mean by big data. They mean taking a lot of data like is already in a lot of healthcare records on health on diagnosis and healthcare utilization and then adding genomic, primarily genomic or maybe biomarker data to it. And that's important, okay? Uh, it certainly is. But if we really want to truly achieve a notion of patient-centered care, or really personalized care, I think we need at least two other types of data too. The one in red is what I'm going to talk about today, and that's patient report information on patient behaviors, patient goals, patient preferences, and that sort of thing. And this project I'm going to describe for you that we call MORE focuses on it. But finally, I think in addition we need uh, better data, and, and this area has exploded with GIS and other data on the fundamental or the social determinants of health as well. So um, this is the last of the, uh, the soapbox uh, speeches, but just, just thinking about now primary care and, uh, and, and what, what, what can they use. Uh, I like to state the uh, second fact, I believe, maybe Deb can tell us or others here, I believe Kaiser alone has spent over a billion dollars on their, uh, their, their EHR, let alone the whole of the rest of the country. But what's the one thing that's consistently missing? Not picking on Kaiser, because I think it's true pretty much of the VA and other places too. Just how much? You have changed, okay, yeah. Well, that's, that's good to hear, so you can correct me there. So my challenge is, I'd argue that logically, uh, it's impossible to say we're providing patient-centered care, okay, if we don't really have any of these type of patient-centered measures. So that's what my story is going to be about. Uh, this is a quick summary of a uh, 
the items that are used in a project to try and assess being really masochistic, 10 different areas that are important to primary care that are seeing very, very prevalent problems. You can read down there what they are. They're a combination of the Framingham risk factors that you all know, um, of substance and alcohol abuse, and then finally mental health, for those of you interested in, in integrated care. Uh, the amazing thing about this story is through using a combination of this grid-enabled measures website that's in your book here and expert panel from the Society of Behavioral Medicine, we were actually able to get some consensus around these and come up with a total of 17 items to assess these 10 things as a screener. Again, not a definitive diagnosis, comprehensive diagnosis, but as a uh, screener. These items were put into an automated tool called My Own Health Report uh, in a project that I'll uh, tell you about. And there's a reference, I think, on page 30 uh, by Alex Christ is the lead investigator on this, a tool that automatically uh, assesses and provides immediate feedback to both patients but also the healthcare team. Uh, on patient status on these different variables. Here's just a shot of the website. Uh, this is publicly available. Uh, if any of you are interested in using it, it also was purposely developed through funding from the Cancer Institute, uh, AHRQ, and uh, Office of Behavioral and Social Science Research to be open source. So you can take it, it's developed module, you can add or subtract to it. Um, I don't have time to tell you, uh, and there's not a, a, an answer yet because this study's in the field, but I thought this would be instructive because we're now pilot, we, we've conducted an earlier pilot, now we're doing what, here is a mouthful, a cluster randomized pragmatic implementation trial. And I'll try and uh, just briefly describe to you what this is. We're using a delayed intervention design uh, in nine pairs of primary care clinics, purposely selected, if you remember the, the praces, the pragmatic criteria that Morska was talking about, to be almost as diverse as you can imagine. They are all over the country, as you can see here. Uh, they are urban, they are rural, they are ones that are leaders in primary care medical home, they're ones that don't, have, haven't heard what that word is, they're ones, one set that has a, kind of a leader in the EHR, others don't have any EHRs, half of them are community health centers, the other half are kind of more traditional, non-integrated care, primary care uh, settings. Um, so I think I will stop there so I have a chance of making my time, but this project is in the field and you have the reference there. Um, the key outcomes of this study, and this is something that you might either say, hmm, that's kind of interesting, or you might say this is a waste of time. We're not trying, remember we're looking at 10 different things, and this is all adult primary care, as close to all adults that come in if you can. Because of that, we don't have one usual primary outcome like NIH has. It's not like diabetes control or hypertension control like in the earlier study we talked about or depression because not you know enough patients have. There's a whole mix of that. The primary outcome is can this tool be consistently implemented and used to provide a goal setting, an action, a shared decision making, and set a, a personal, personal goal with patients. Those are our outcomes. And with that, I'm down to my last uh, slide, unless you have questions. Uh, the lessons learned thus far, we, we should have results from this trial within, within about another month. It's a rapid trial. But the first uh, two were frankly uh, fairly amazing to us. Uh, almost all the stakeholders, including patients and a variety of different primary care providers, found these items to be relevant, useful, and actionable. They could do, they could do something with, despite really low literacy levels in some of the clinics that these, these made sense. Admittedly, in some of the community health centers, one or two, they had to read the items to the patients because they were, were functionally illiterate, but still they kind of understood what the questions were and things. Second, even more amazing, uh, particularly given the political climate today, it was actually possible to get people to agree to come to some consensus across, and we purposely took all sorts of different stakeholders, from researchers to practitioners to policymakers to patient, patient advocates. Um, the last two uh, might be more important take-homes or take-aways. There's no such thing, at least from my perspective, as a perfect measure. 
Okay? And often, as a lot of my CDC colleagues tell me, trying in this area, in this messy world that Ross described to you, trying to get perfect can often be the enemy of the good. And finally, on the basis of no data whatsoever, other than my gut level feel, is of these various criteria for this notion of these brief practical measures, we really feel that being actionable, and by that we mean providing some information that a healthcare team or a patient can act on and do something about, okay, use that for improvement, and being sensitive to change. Because the idea is that this project that we're talking about hopefully will be something that can be sustained and used to track progress, both individual patient and with the panel of patients over time. And I think I'm out of time. So thank you.